is Chapter 2, Key Issue 3, Demographic Transition Model. The learning goal is for students that they would be able to explain the stages of the demographic transition model and what influences countries to move through the different stages. And given the demographic indicators of a country like crude birth rate, crude death rate, natural increase rate, they can predict which demographic transition stage the country is in. Regarding population pyramids in this key issue, the learning goal would be that students will be able to explain how to read a population pyramid and determine which demographic transition model stage a country is in based on the pyramid's shape. The last two sections, countries in different stages of demographic transition, are specific examples of countries that are in various stages two, three, and four, and what um, the history that determined how they got through these different stages. And then the last section, D, demographic transition and world population, is an overall look at um, patterns and um, specific time periods or incidents in, in history that pushed these countries to, through these different stages. The concepts that I want you to be able to know are the demographic transition model, reasons for rapid growth, in these demographic transition model, um, specifically the agricultural revolution, the Neolithic, which is the Neolithic revolution, industrial revolution, and medical revolution. I want you to understand what zero population growth is, replacement fertility, the country the DTM was based off, population pyramids, what the dependency ratio is, sex ratio as it relates to population pyramids, and what demographic momentum is. So let's get started. First of all, this graph um, up above is the demographic transition model. The blue is the death rate, the red is birth, and then the brown is the natural increase rate. And countries go through each of these different stages these are, as we went through in class, you can see what the crude birth rate is, crude death rate, and natural increase rate, and the different countries or regions of the world that would be typically found in these stages and other important information. We'll come back and look at this again. So stage one is where there is a high crude birth rate and a high crude death rate. This happened before any kind of um, technological innovation in the Industrial Revolution. And it started in 8000 BCE, approximately, um, with the Agricultural Revolution, also called the Neolithic Revolution, where hunter-gatherers um, settled in river valleys and started farming. They were able to settle and not have to search for their food. So as they settled their um, people had an improved food supply and this caused an increase in the crude birth rate. But at the same time, there was lots of wars, there was lots of disease, no medicine, so people died also at very early ages. So crude birth rate was high, crude death rate was high, so basically, when you look at the natural increase rate, it is zero because their crude birth rate and crude death rate are essentially the same. No country is currently in stage one. All countries have moved beyond that. There might be little pockets of um, um, ethnic groups or tribes here and there, but as, as far as a country, there is no country in stage one. Stage two you see that the birth rate remains high, but the death rate um, begins to drop rapidly. And this is because of medical technology. Through innovation, uh, medical practices, sanitation, um, public health acts and government um, laws, practices that allow people to live longer, this allowed people to live longer and the death rate um, goes down. 
from stage one. Different parts of the world went through their stage two. Parts in um, Western Europe and the United States, what we would consider developed nations or first world nations, went through this stage two of the demographic transition when they went through their industrial revolution of innovative technology and new inventions. Countries in the regions of Africa, Asia, and Latin America went into their stage two during what's called the medical revolution. This happened somewhere in the middle, around the middle of the 20th century, in the 1900s. So this is the diffusion of medical practices that were developed in Europe and North America and then spread to LDCs. And this allowed them to live longer and you know, not, not die from diseases and poor sanitation and poor health. As you see, the natural increase rate is very high, 2 or higher, 2.5 or higher. And typically, countries in Africa would be in stage 2. There will be other countries elsewhere, but if you're looking at a region, typically countries in Africa are in stage 2. Stage 3 of the demographic transition model, you have now a falling crude birth rate. The crude death rate was falling stage two, but now you see that the crude birth rate is starting to fall in stage three. And the reason being is that as people were either, they're in their industrial revolution, they were leaving their rural farms and moving to the cities, urbanization, for work. There was not the need to have children in the cities as they did on the farm, so people had less kids. Because of medical improvement, the infant mortality was lower. People chose to have fewer kids because most all of their kids would survive. And typically, just as the wealth and education of a country increases, people choose to have fewer kids. The social norms change about families, family size. Also, the use of contraceptives, birth control, um, dictate that birth of fewer, uh, dictate the birth of fewer children per women. So all these help to decrease the birth rate, and as you see, the natural increase rate has slowed um, from stage two, which was high, um, greater than two percent. And you can typically say that the natural increase rate is between one and two percent in a stage three. North America went through their stage in the mid-1900s and currently uh, it's typical to find Asian and Latin American countries in stage 3. Stage 4, you see that the crude birth rate continues to drop as the crude death rate continues to drop. And as those two, um, as the gap between crude, crude birth rate and crude death rate um, diminishes, you see the natural increase rate approaching zero. So typical of an NIR would be 0 to 1%. The social customs and uh, of stage 3, people choosing to have fewer kids, continues in stage 4. In addition, though, you have more women entering the labor force. So they either delay marriage and delay uh, having kids and ha choose to have fewer kids. Um, this is... Um, also helps with the use of contraceptives, birth control. And some women choose not to have kids at all. They might just choose to be a career woman. And with the increase in their income and leisure activities, they might choose not to have kids and use that money for um, themselves. The stage four reflects a highly industrialized and educated society. And typically, the regions in the world that you find in stage four would be North America, Canada, United States, Europe, especially Western Europe, and Australia. There is a possible stage five in the demographic transition model. And this is characterized by a still lower and still following crude birth rate 
The crude death rate is also low, but might slightly be increasing, but it's becoming a little bit higher than crude birth rate. So when you figure what the NIR is by subtracting crude birth rate, subtracting the crude death rate from the crude birth rate, you have a negative NIR. So the population is actually shrinking. Some regions of the world um, would be, like especially in Northern Europe, Germany, Russia, Japan, would all be in a stage five of negative growth. So again, here is, an, albeit messy, um, what typically would be the crude birth rate and crude death rate in IR regions of the world um, that are typically found in these stages. And then drawing out stage five and what that looks like. Here's another visual that's kind of helpful. You can see the gap between here, the gap between the birth rate and the death rate. This is going to be the NIR, which would reflect how population is growing. And then for each of the stages, you see um, examples of countries would be in those stages. You see what is characteristic of the birth rate, the death rate, natural increase rate and um, reasons for each of these changes and even looking specifically at death in, within these different stages. On to population pyramids. Population pyramids show age distribution, usually um, every five years, and sex ratio, male to female. So this might be reflected as 95 males to 100 females which is fairly typical. So in matching these 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 with their letters, if you want to pause the video and try and think about which letters go with each of those, um, go ahead and pause and then I will give you the answers. So number one, female side of the pyramid would be the right side, which is side B. Number two, the male side of the pyramid would be the left side, which is side A. The age in years is going to be reflected on the y-axis here. The population either in percent or number is going to be on the x-axis here, S. And looking at the 50 to 50 year old female cohort, that's E right here in this side five-year um, increment, um, and then the 25 to 30-year-old male cohort is here. Cohort is just a fancy word for group. Then, if you were to look at the colors of the pyramid, you have green here, you have white, yellow here, and then you have uh, kind of an orange color. Looking here, write a fraction for the dependency ratio using the colors in the pyramid. So if you want to think about that, and I'll give you the answer. All right, so when you pull this aside, if you add the green color, which represents people that are elderly who are too old to work, plus the orange, and this represents children who are below 15 years old and they are too young to work, that is divided by the yellow, which is people who are in their working productive years. That is your dependency ratio, which is reflected here. So the dependency ratio is, let me go ahead and move this up so you can see this. It's the number of, or percentage of people who are too young or too old to work divided by the percentage of people in their productive years. So if you can imagine this picture, people either who are too old or too young are standing on the shoulders of people in their working years. So if there's a very large elderly population, it puts a strain on the people in their productive working years to support them in their pensions and their health needs and so forth. Or you could have a very large child children's population, youth population, um, that stands in the soldier shoulders and um, puts a strain on the working population um, to pay for their education and health and whatnot. 
When you look at the shape of a population pyramid, it will be determined by the crude birth rate, which will reflect, uh, which will be reflected in the base of the pyramid. So when you look to analyze population pyramids, you'll want to look at the base of the pyramid if it's very, very wide, such as here. A very, very wide base, then that reflects a very large youthful population, a fast uh, growing population that would be a country in stage two. If you look at the base of the pyramid, um, for stage three, you see that it's still somewhat of a triangle. It's wider at the bottom, but not quite as wide as stage two. So it's still growing, but moderate growth. Um, and you would typically think this is stage three. A stage four, the base of the pyramid is going to look fairly, um, almost like a, a rectangle. Where the, the last, you know, three or four are going to, three or four cohorts are going to be uh, maybe slightly um, bigger, um, but basically approaching zero. And at stage five, you would start to see the base of the pyramid start to taper in as the population is shrinking. So you can use the base of the pyramid primarily, but the whole shape of the population pyramid uh, with a focus on the base to um, determine what stage, demographic ten transition stage, a country is in. Demographic momentum, also called hidden momentum, is the tendency for a population to continue growing long after replacement fertility has been achieved. Now, replacement fertility is when two people have two kids and when the two people, the two parents, mom and dad, pass away, the children then replace them. Um, as a population. So even a country with a very, very large youthful population, very wide base in stage two, will continue to grow even um, after um, replacement fertility has been achieved, even after um, everybody on average has, is, has two kids. Um, you have such a large population base, such a large population of, of young people that, that will be that move into their reproductive years, even though each of them does have two kids, the population will continue to grow um, probably for a good generation, um, 70, 80 years, until it can finally achieve zero population growth. And you can liken this to thinking about a large truck versus a small smart car as they drive the same speed and then instantly put the brakes on, zero population growth, the smart car will stop fairly quickly, but a very large truck or even train will take um, a lot longer to stop. And so just like a, a country that's very, very large, fast growing, um, faster it's going, it's going to take a lot more, it's going to take a lot longer for it to actually slow down and stop. That's demographic momentum. Then looking at the specific countries um, that case studies, looking at the different stages, uh, we have Cape Verde, which is just off the coast of Africa, and it is currently in stage two. It entered this stage after an anti-malaria campaign, which would be their medical revolution, and this brought down the crude birth rate, sorry, crude death rate, but the country still continues to have a high crude birth rate. So this is typical of African countries. Stage three example is Chile. Um, and they grew during their stage two immigration and, um, and then also the medical revolution. And then in the 1960s, with a very vigorous government policies on family planning, they were able to reduce the crude birth rate and enter into a stage three, which it currently is at. Denmark is the example for stage four in North, Northwestern Europe. It entered stage two during their Industrial Revolution, 
the Industrial Revolution in the early 1800s. Then in the late 1800s, when the CBR dropped, this was um, entering into stage three. Since the 1970s, the natural increase rate has uh, achieved zero population growth, so it is in stage four. And with medical advances, you'll see an increase in elderly people moving um, more than the young people, causing the crude death rate to rise above the crude birth rate, leading into that stage five of negative growth. The demographic transition and world population growth patterns is that we see that worldwide rap rapid population increased during the second half of the 20th century, which is the 1900s. This is that J curve that we talked about at the beginning of the chapter, where since the mid-1900s when the um, LDCs, the less developed countries, um, went through their medical revolution and people lived a lot longer and the crude death rate dropped, you see this um, population explosion, which is represented here on the graph, past the red line. Today, most countries are in either stage two or three, which is high or moderate growth. There is no country in stage one, and there are few countries in stage four and five. So there are two big breaks, two big changes um, with the past in regarding the demographic transition model. So the very first big change or break would be the sudden drop in the crude death rate and due to the technical advances. So the drop, drop in death rate caused countries to move from their stage one into their stage two. Europe and North America saw this happen during their industrial revolution. Africa, Asia, Latin America saw this happen during their medical revolution. The second big break would be the sudden drop in crude birth rate, which happened, um, changed countries from stage two to stage three with the uh, falling crude birth rate. And this is due to changing social norms, to people choose to have kids uh, for various reasons. Europe and North America have already entered this stage three. We see uh, Asia and Latin America um, entering into the stage, um, but yet to see many countries in Africa enter into the stage. 